Hey there folks, welcome to the channel and welcome to Celebrate Sausage, a series designed to help you level up your sausage game and introduce you to an entirely brand new world of sausages. In today's episode, we are going to be making the Italian Brianza Salami. This is an incredible salami. It's hundreds of years old and produced almost exclusively in Northern Italy. The first time I got a chance to taste the Brianza salami, I immediately fell in love. I mean, it's very simply seasoned, it's delicate, it's incredibly aromatic with hints of sweetness and fruity notes. It's absolutely delicious. And in today's episode, I'm gonna take you through all the steps on how to make this incredible salami at home. Now, I do wanna say that salami making is on the difficult side of this particular craft. And so if you've mastered fresh sausages and smoked sausages and you're looking for what's next, salami making is definitely where you should be. It's challenging, it's rewarding, it's exhilarating, it's frustrating all at the exact same time. And we do have a lot of videos on how to make salami. And even then we get loads of emails asking for online classes. And although I don't offer any online classes, a friend of mine by the name of Meredith Lee, some of you might know her, does offer online classes. So I'll put a link to her online class in the description box below in the event that you're interested in diving a little bit deeper into this craft. She starts with the basics, goes through butchery, and then ends up with some of the most advanced charcuterie that you'll ever know. It's a great class from a real pro in the field. I highly suggest checking it out. So you'll find a link in the description box below. All right, no worries. Let's make the Italian Brianza salami. All right, let's get the salami going. Now we're going to start off by preparing a mold culture. This is a mold known as Mold 600 or Penicillium Nalgivense. And check out the expiration date. It says there June the 4th of 2022. So it's a little expired. These cultures will generally last a little bit longer than what the manufacturer recommends. Just keep them in the freezer. You should be good to go. So what we're going to do here is just add about a half a teaspoon to two cups of water. And I'm going to be doing this first. We want that culture to be nice and active by the time we apply it. So you can let this rehydrate for anywhere between two to three hours at room temperature to overnight. You're just going to give it a stir, leave it at room temperature. You don't want to refrigerate this and we'll get back to this when we're ready for it. All right. As far as the meats go, this is an all pork salami. We're going to be using pork shoulder and pork back fat, basically a 70 to 30 lean to fat ratio. And if you want to play with the meats and play with the fat ratio, it's totally up to you. I will have this recipe in the description box below. So be sure to check it out if you want to make this salami. Now that our meat is done, we're going to combine all the meat and fat together. We're going to grind this together, and I want to put it into a tray. Before we even think about grinding it, we need the temperature of this to be below 34 degrees, ideally 32. So into the freezer it goes while we look at our spices. We've got salt, a little cure number two. We're going to be adding some white pepper. I've also got some garlic powder and dextrose. Dextrose is the sugar that feeds the bacteria that we're going to be adding. I'm also adding a touch of high heat non-fat dry powder milk and some whole peppercorn. And there you go. That's what our spice profile is going to look like. Our meat at this point is properly chilled. The temperature of our meat right now is about 31 degrees Fahrenheit and it's time to grind on a six millimeter plate. Our meat is ground, it looks perfect, and now it's time to rechill it. If you rechill your meat before you mix it, the fat particles will firm up and it's gonna give you beautiful particle definition. So that's what we're gonna do back in the freezer while we prepare our starter culture. The starter culture we're using is called Flavor of Italy, my absolute favorite so far. And this starter culture is nothing more than a series of bacteria that safely ferment our meat. The bacteria in here are responsible for flavor development, color development, you know, aroma development, and it's absolutely predictable and quick. Let this sit on your counter at room temperature for 30 minutes to rehydrate before you use it. And while that's rehydrating, let's prepare our casing. We're using a large format casing for this sausage, 100 millimeters. And I got to be honest, I am not sure that this salami is going to be ready by the time this episode airs, which is quite possibly the reason why I'm scheduling it towards the end of October. I mean, a casing this size will take every bit of two months, if not three months. So I guess we'll see what happens. You can't really rush this kind of food. This only needs to rehydrate for five minutes in lukewarm water. Once that is rehydrated, we can go ahead and get it ready to case. Our meat has now been rechilled. And now it's time to mix. So let's get our spices in there. Uh, and in case you're wondering why I use non-fat dry milk, 
Maybe it deserves its own video, but the primary reason is because it produces a very nice bind on this salami. So that's in. Let's get our starter culture in the meat. And then one final ingredient as we mix, we're going to add some white wine. It's going to add an absolutely beautiful flavor to this salami. So white wine in. We're going to mix this until our meat mixture gets nice and tacky, very sticky. If I grab a handful of it, you know the deal. It'll stick to the underside of my hand when I turn it over, just like so. That ain't going nowhere. So at this point, our meat is ready for its casing. Don't be tempted to taste this at this point. This has cure number two in it. And if you cook up a patty and eat it up, you'll be eating unconverted nitrites, which is incredibly not safe. So we're just going to trust that the recipe works and let's go ahead and stuff it into its casing. We want to pack it in there. I mean, as tight as possible. We want to make sure that we minimize air pockets and just really get that uh, sausage meat smashed into that casing just like that. Once we've got it in there, it's time to go ahead and tie it off. We're using a sausage stuffing cleaner to empty out our tube. And we're just going to tie off a simple bubble knot at one end in order to keep that casing from opening up during the drying process. We'll cover a video on how to do bubble knots uh, separately in the event that you were wondering. So now that that's tied off, let's make a hanging point for our hook. And we can now safely move on to the next step, which is pricking your salami. We want to make sure that we prick the salami all the way around. This is going to help the casing adhere. It's also going to get rid of any air pockets. One final thing we want to do is weigh it because this is what's going to tell us when it's ready. So our actual weight is 1,075 grams. I'm going to target a 35% weight loss. So once this salami loses 35% and it gets to 699 grams, this salami is ready to eat. Remember that mold that we prepared at the beginning of this video? We're brushing that on at this point with just a regular kitchen brush. I like this way of putting on the mold because you don't use a lot and it's very, very effective. So I just brush all my salami with that prepared mold. It's now time to ferment. This is the final step before we dry it. We want the pH of that meat to lower to anything below 5.2. That starter culture that we added is certainly going to help. We do want to pay attention to temperature and humidity when we ferment. Humidity has got to be super high. The reason I wrap my salami in cling film is because that locks in the humidity. So at this point, we don't have to worry about humidity. The humidity inside that little package there is going to be easily 90%, probably 95 or 100%. So once we wrap that nice and tight, and I'm going to wrap it in there twice, the humidity element for our fermentation has been covered. The only thing we need to worry about now is temperature. The bacteria in this starter culture like to ferment between 70 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can literally place this anywhere you want in your house where those conditions are met. Some people put it in an oven with a light on. In my case, the temperature of my kitchen is about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm literally just going to leave my salami to ferment at room temperature, just like this right on top of the cutting board. I did save back a little sample piece of that meat so we can test the pH just to make sure we're in the right range. But let's recap. Fermentation is 18 to 24 hours. Temperature 70 to 85 Fahrenheit and the humidity is above 90%. Our pH target is anything below 5.2, but you don't want to go too low. You don't want to go under 4.9. So let's test the pH. It's been about 21 hours, give or take, and this little sample piece smells amazing. If you notice, it's no longer gooey and soft. It's actually firmed up quite a bit and the colors have magnified. So let's use our a pair of instruments pH meter to test the pH. This is a very accurate, very quick way to safely test the pH. Remember, anything under 5.2, look at that, we're at 5.18. I could let this go another three or four hours if I really wanted to, but like I said, it's getting late and I do not want to pull an all-nighter. Anything under 5.2 is acceptable and we are good to go with this salami. So let's unwrap it and stick this into our drying chamber. If you have a cellar or a basement with an average humidity of 80%, and a temperature of 55 degrees Fahrenheit, you can place it in there. I don't. My temperature is usually pretty high. And so I'm going to place this into a dedicated dry curing cabinet made for salami. This is by the sausage maker. The temperature should be around 55 Fahrenheit, 13 Celsius, and the average humidity should be around 80%. And this is going to dry until we lose 35%.
If you like a softer salami, you could pull it at 30%. If you like a firmer salami, you could pull it at 40%. And now we wait. Smells incredible, slightly sweet, slightly earthy from the mold, a little fermented and a little fruity. I mean, just overall, it's got this very delicate aroma that's coming from it. Now we dried ours at 35%, so it is gonna be a little softer than let's say a hard salami. If you do prefer a more firm salami, dry it to 40%, even 42%, it's really a personal preference. Now a salami of this diameter can be a little challenging, especially if you want it to dry even. So you wanna make sure that your chamber is dialed in. You wanna to try to tighten up the parameters to where you're hitting that 55 Fahrenheit or 13 Celsius and that 75, 80%. And I've got a video coming up showing you how to dial in your DIY chamber and then how to dial in the sausage maker dry curing chamber. But this dried absolutely perfect. We've got no dry ring, beautiful texture. Oh, that looks amazing. Let's just give it a taste. Mm. <laughs> wow, the peppercorn, it kind of takes it up a notch. The texture is absolutely perfect. The fat is nice and creamy. Just a great salami overall. I hope you get a chance to make it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you got anything out of this video, a thumbs up is always helpful. If you're new to this channel and you like sausage making or meat preservation, take a moment and click that subscribe button and notification bell because we've got lots of content that I think you're totally gonna be into. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to check out Meredith's online charcuterie course. Link in the description box below and stay tuned because tomorrow, same time, same place, we're making a sausage that is meaty, cheesy goodness. I don't want you to miss it. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>